Your liver is a remarkable organ because if it's injured, it can regenerate and it can repair itself. But it's not invincible and it can be damaged beyond the point of repair. Scientists haven't fully understood what triggers the liver to regrow until today. And that's good news for the 6 million Australians who live with chronic liver disease. It's an incredible number. Professor Mark Dawson is the Head of Cancer Biology and Therapeutics at Peter McCallum Cancer Centre and joins us now. Professor Dawson, welcome. Yes, good morning. Thank you for having me on your show. We know the liver can regenerate. How unique is that? As an organ, very unique. Um, you know, the, we've known for, in fact, centuries that the liver can regenerate um, to various um, injuries, uh, be it trauma, um, be it um, toxic injuries. Um, and it's, um, it, it, it's something that we've wanted to study for a very long time. You've been investigating the complex processes that trigger regeneration. So put simply to those uh, basically not, not as knowledgeable as you, what have you discovered? Yes, yeah, so this was a body of work that was done by a fantastic student that was supervised both by myself and Dr. Andrew Cox. And the question that she wanted to ask was, when the liver is insulted, particularly with chemical injuries such as paracetamol, um, and paracetamol uh, overdoses is one of the most common causes of, of liver damage, um, how does the liver regenerate and what are the cues in the liver that cause this regeneration process? And to do this, what we had to do was create an animal model. In this case, we chose zebrafish for many reasons. Um, zebrafish are clear as they grow and so they enable us to see the internal organs in great detail. And what she made here was a zebrafish model that enabled us to study what genes are expressed at what precise time to enable this regeneration process. And what she discovered is that there are waves of gene expression that really set a program that initially causes the liver to go from a fed to a fasted state, so that's an initial response, and then to trigger a master regulator that coordinates this regeneration process by changing the metabolism of the liver. Okay, so now you essentially understand how regeneration is triggered. Are there any drugs available that you can use to test this and see how it works? That's an excellent question. So this master regulator is a gene called NERF2, um, and we've known a lot about this, not only in liver injury, but in injury of other organs. And there are some early drugs that are thought to affect this pathway, some of which that have actually made it into clinical trials for other diseases, chronic kidney disease, etc. So it is still very early in the piece and we may need more specific drugs, but now that we understand exactly what this protein does and how it coordinates this regeneration process, that will certainly be the focus for ongoing work to try and understand how we can better, better utilise this knowledge um, to help, as you say, the 6 million people living with chronic liver disease um, in Australia alone. Let's go to that incredible statistic because it's staggering to me, 6 million people in Australia living with a form of chronic liver disease. 7,000 people die from liver failure each year. Will a different therapy have to be designed for different liver problems? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I think the regenerative process shares many things in common, be that if it's a surgical resection of a liver, liver trauma, damage to the liver from alcohol, from various viruses such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C, um, or indeed drugs such as chemotherapies, anesthetics, or, or paracetamol. All of these injuries, we think, have some commonality in the regenerative process that they initiate. And so that's going to be focused on going work because if we can find this common, if this common thread extends to a number of different injuries, then the work that we have just completed has much broader application. So does this research have the potential to help people with liver cancer then? That, that is a more difficult question. We know that this pathway 
potentially has some involvement in liver cancer. And it's important to understand that, you know, this liver damage sets really the seed for the generation of liver cancer. Exactly how this pathway may contribute to liver cancer is less well understood. And I think I think that's probably another area of investigation that we would have to think about in greater detail. Professor Dawson, for someone living with chronic liver disease, and given this, there are so many, there are pe- people listening right now who are, what can they take away from the news? Just that, you know, several things, I think, to take away from the news. The first thing I would advocate for is the fact that, you know, there is some incredible discovery science being done in Australia, and they should be very proud of the discoveries made by Australians. This is one example of where that investment in understanding the fundamental processes that lead to disease may ultimately lead to better cures. Um, We are working very hard thinking about them, thinking about what um, drives their problems and, and trying to understand whether we can better develop new drugs that are made in this country that can potentially help them in the future. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me on on your show. Professor Mark Dawson is the Head of Cancer Biology and Therapeutics at Peter McCallum Cancer Institute.